and here you'll find all kinds of ideas for elementary school teachers. Halloween is a really fun time to let students be imaginative and get creative without getting overly scary or gory. I find there's a lot of things you can sprinkle in throughout the month and the week leading up to or the week of Halloween that just get students in the spooky spirit but in a fun, lighthearted way. At most of the schools I've taught at, we did not have a certain party or time of the day where we had like Halloween activities. So these are just things that you can incorporate to your day as you go about your regular school day. If you have an actual time where you have like a Halloween party per se, a lot of these ideas could be incorporated into that time as well. Without further ado, let's jump into the ideas. A little pro tip before we get started is to make sure you're keeping track of all of your original copies in some kind of folder so they're really easy to find the next year. I just have this little file folder that says Halloween and as you can tell, I've got plenty of things in here to share with you. So idea number one is maybe my favorite. I should have probably saved it for the end, but I just had to show it to you right off the bat because it's so much fun and you can use it throughout the month multiple times if you wanted, or just once the week of Halloween, whatever your preference is. This activity I like to call make a costume for your teacher. This is always such a big hit with the students. At the top, it just says, what should my teacher be for Halloween? Costume design by, and then they pick what the costume should be, and they list out some reasons for that. This is especially cute with the littles because their reasons are just adorable. But for older students, you could also make it more of a competition where they have to persuade you or the class what costume you should pick, and you could even pick winner if you desired, or have the class vote on which one they thought turned out the best. Pro tip for this is that if you are going to use your photo, you don't have to, you could just use the blank version where they would just color your face for you, but I think it's extra fun to insert your photo, and there are two ways to do so. You could do this by putting your picture into the Microsoft template if you have Microsoft I think it's on PowerPoint or Word. You could insert a photo of yourself and PowerPoint has a remove background tool that you could use to edit it so that it's just your face and then drag it over that part of the image. Or if you wanna do it old school, you could print out a photo of yourself, cut it out so that it's just your face, put your face on and then make a copy of the form so that the form has your face on it. You could also edit this form so that students could decorate a costume for it themselves if you wanted them to get to create their own costume. Or you could even do this for other people in the building. Last year at my school, we did it for our principal and I emailed the template to the other teachers so that other classes could do it as well. And that was just a fun way to get everyone involved and see their creativity shine. One thing I would advise is that you tell students not to use any blood or death in their drawings because we do want them to be school appropriate. But when you think Halloween, sometimes you think really scary things. So I had them do no blood or weapons just to kind of keep it more rated G. and. That seemed to work pretty well. We like to display these in the hallway too because it's just really fun to see what everybody comes up with. I offer this resource for free to those who join my email list and I will leave the link to grab it in the description. The second activity I have for you is to read your class a Halloween book. Now there are too many to mention and hopefully you're able to read them some throughout the whole month of October, but I'm just going to mention a few favorites. We absolutely loved Creepy Carrots, which I believe I borrowed from our classroom library because I could not for the life of me find it to show you, but that one is always a hit. And this is a new one that my class enjoyed last year, The Good, The Bad, and The Spooky, which is a spinoff of The Bad Seed, which is also a great book. And Frankenstein is a, another favorite. 
I have a couple more as well, let me find them. Okay, so Creepy Pair of Underwear is another really fun one. It is the same character as Creepy Carrots, so both of those are just really fun and well done. Gustavo the Shy Ghost I hear is really cute. I have not personally read that one, but I've heard several people say it's really good. Ooh, I see the Creepy Crown is another Creepy Carrot spinoff, but I have not read that one either. I found it. The last one I was going to mention is The Little Old Lady Who Is Not Afraid of Anything. That is a really good read, especially I'd say for third grade and under, because there's all sorts of noises that you could have them do while the book is being read. It's one of those books where each page she like meets something new and it makes a sound and it has a lot of onomatopoeias in it, so I'd let my students make those noises. And if you want to make the reading experience even more engaging, I highly recommend using the app Novel Effect. Novel Effect was a must-have in my classroom, and it pairs really well with a lot of the Halloween books I just mentioned. Essentially, you download this app, and then you tell it which book you're reading. It doesn't have every book, but it has a ton. They even have a poll section just for Halloween-themed books. And then whenever you go to read your book to the class, you tap on the book in your Novel Effect app, and as you read, it's listening to you, and it will play fitting background music and noises, sound effects that go along with the story. It's so beautifully done, and it makes the students so engaged and excited to see what the noises will be. Let me see if I can show you an example. Okay, so I picked Krankenstein, and I tapped on the book, and then there's a little music symbol that you pick to load the sounds. So it's going to load that makes that noise when it's ready and I forgot to mention you could connect this to a speaker if you want the sound to be even better but I don't have it so we'll just do it that. Krankenstein written by Samantha Berger. Have you seen Krankenstein? Oh, you would totally know if you had. You might see Krankenstein when it's super rainy outside. Or when it's extra cold on Halloween. Okay, we'll stop there, but as you can see, it's so fun and engaging and your students will absolutely love it. Novel Effect is a paid app if you want to get all of the stories, but I believe at the time of this recording, they offer you a plan where you can use it free. It's just select books and I believe you can do five reads a month. So I'm not sure exactly which books are in there since I do have the paid plan. If you look on their website, you'll also see that they have a special plan just for teachers and they have all kinds of templates you can do to send to your district or your principal or your PTO to see if they can cover the cost of it for you. So I will link that in the description below. Idea number three is to do a Halloween themed STEM challenge with your students. There are so, so many to pick from. But if you read the book Creepy Carrots, there are some that go right along with that book and that is what I did with my students last year. In the Creepy Carrots book, there is a patch of carrots and a fence is built around them at a point in the book to keep the carrots inside. Well, that's what the character thinks he's doing, but you'll read the book to see more. So what my students had to do is they had to use popsicle sticks and clothes pins to build a fence around their carrots. And so we had a little picture of the patch of creepy carrots and they had to use their materials to see how high they could build their fence using the materials that they had. There are a lot of really cute ones that I see online that use candy corn and are building candy corn towers. I see a lot of them using the pumpkin shaped candy corn and not the traditional candy corn, probably because they are easier to build with since they are round. I've seen some using toothpicks and those candy corn pumpkins or popsicle sticks and the candy corn pumpkins and they would be given a set amount of time, maybe 10 minutes, and they would see how high they and their group could build their tower. These activities are really fun for the students. They engage their engineering side of their brain and 
they promote collaboration and working together. So those are always a really good activity to throw in if you have some time on the end of a Friday for a fun Friday type of activity for a morning meeting team builder or if you happen to have a Halloween party, that would also be a fun game the students could play. Activity number four is a really good one to throw into your academic time of the school day and that is ghost spelling. My students absolutely love this. We use it as a reading station all throughout October since many a times we would be doing a spelling activity anyways. This one was a really good fit. Basically what students do is they pick 10 of their spelling words since there are 10 boxes and they write those words in white crown. Then when they're done, they can pick a marker color of their choice they could use black or purple or orange if they want to be Halloween themed, but really it could be most marker choices. Yellow, it might not show up super well. But they pick a marker and then they color over the boxes to reveal the words because they are very invisible when they are written in white and when they shade over them with the marker, they all appear. So that's why it's called ghost spelling because they're kind of invisible and then the marker makes them appear. So students loved doing this and it's a really fun activity that's simple to input into any time in October, but especially the week of Halloween. This template happens to be a freebie from Crispel's Creations on TPT and I will link it for you in the description. The fifth activity idea I have for you is what I'm just going to call a spooky game. You can really play this at any time during the year, but I think during October or the week of Halloween would be extra fun. You can tell your students that you are a mind reader and that it's incredibly spooky how you can read minds. They're all going to be spooked and I think that would tie in really nicely. The premise of the game is really simple. You're going to basically do a magic trick, but the students may not be able to figure it out and that's what makes it spooky or suspicious and fun. So you start by telling the students that you are going to read their minds and then you ask four simple questions. Three of the questions you can pretty much make up on your own. You're basically just having the students select an answer, but the fourth question is the important one, which we'll get to in a second. Then you said you were going to ask for someone's favorite color. So then you call on a student and you say, whatever their student's name is. So Isaac, let's say his name is Isaac. Think of your favorite color, but don't tell me. And then you tell them, I'm going to write down your favorite color and I'm gonna read your mind. And so then they're thinking of their favorite color and what the students think you're doing is they think you're writing down their favorite color, but really you're not. So I'll show you at the end what they're doing. Okay, so they think you're writing down favorite color and then say, okay, you got it. I have mine right here. What's your favorite color? Let's say they say red. You say, okay, red, great. We'll see if my guess, if my, uh, if I read your mind in just a minute. Then you pick another student and you ask them a different question. So let's say you picked a different student and you said, pick a number between one and 10, but don't tell me. I'm going to write down, I'm going to read your mind what you're thinking. So then that student's thinking of their number and they think that you're writing it down, but here's what you're actually doing. What you're actually doing is you're writing down the answer from the previous question. So the first question I asked the student what their favorite color was and they said that it was red. They think I've already written it down, but I haven't. I'll explain what I did later. So what I'm doing during the second question is I'm writing down the answer from the first question, but they don't know that. So they think I'm writing down a number. Then I say, okay, yes, I've got your number here. And Go ahead and tell everybody what your number was. Oh, it was seven, okay. Cool, we'll see if I read your mind. Then I'm moving on to the next question, but all the while I'm going to write down a seven because I'm writing down the answers after they say it, they just don't know. So then on the next question, let's say I asked so-and-so, pick a friend in the room, don't tell me who it is, I'm gonna write it down on my sticky note and see if I can read your mind. But meanwhile, you're writing down the answer from the previous question. Once you have it, you fold it up. And then I say, well, of course you wouldn't let them see. And then you say, okay, who's the friend you're thinking of? Let's say they said, oh, I was thinking of Jennifer. And I said, okay, cool, we'll see if I read your mind. Then you say, okay, 
one more question and then you ask the last student, this one's important, so you ask the last student to pick a direction up or down. Don't tell me what it is, I'm going to raise your mic. So while they're thinking of up or down, their direction, you are writing down the answer to the previous question, which was Jennifer in this case. So now you have your four questions. And you say, okay, let's see if I read your mind. And you mix up your sticky notes, and then you open one up and you say, um, okay, so Isaac, what was the color that you said you picked? And he says red, and you say, and you show them the sticky note that has red on it, and they go wild. They think you totally read that student's mind. You can probably see where this is going. You continue as such. The number, the student thought of seven. They're in awe of you at this point. And then the student they picked in the class, they say the student's name, you show them, they go ballistic. And then on the last one you say, what was the direction you thought of? Let's say they said down. Here's where the magic comes in. On the first sticky note, when that student's thinking of their first answer, you're just drawing an arrow. Just a nice, simple little arrow. Because then no matter what the student picks on the last question, if they pick up, you can say, yep, I said it was up. But if they say down, you can say, yep, I knew it was down. You could even get trickier and do like left and right if you want to, if you want to get crazy. But I just stuck with up and down. So that is the trick. And then they think you totally read their minds and they'll want to do it again and again and again. So just be warned. <laughs> they think it's so much fun. And then they love trying to guess how you did it as well. So that is the simple trick is that you start by drawing the arrow and then you make sure that's your last question is for them to pick a direction. And the other questions really you could ask them whatever you wanted. You're just going to listen to their answer and then write that answer down on the next sticky note on the next question. And then you're gonna end with the arrow question, the direction, which you'll have already done a sticky note for. So that's how you can know all the answers and have them written down and read the student's mind. They will absolutely love this and I will link to a video of when I did it with my class so you can see it in action. The sixth idea is to play a Halloween math escape game with your students. My students absolutely loved this and I loved that it incorporated something academic so we could play it during our math time on the day of Halloween or the day leading up to it if Halloween is not on a day of school. This is so fun for the students because it is taking them through a storyline, so it's very engaging, but they have to apply their math skills in order to make their way through each level. And the final puzzle at the end reveals a code word, and that's always really exciting to see what it spells out. We do these for each month of the year, depending on the season or the holiday that fits in with that month. And the Halloween one is really, really cute. It has a little ghost named Gia who is trying to throw a Halloween party and needs the help of the students in order to get everything ready. I also love this math escape game because it is all digital. So there is zero prep that you need to do. I just have the students pair up and then they use their Chromebook and I send them the link to the Google form and they go through the activity. I do put a timer on the board so they know how much time they have to complete the activity. And the whole point is to see if they can escape in the amount of time that they have. I also love that the form is self-checking. So as they go through, if they get an answer wrong, it will tell them that it's incorrect and it won't let them move to the next level until they get all the answers in the current level correct. So that makes it really easy for me so that I'm not having to check each individual answer. It's moving them through the game on its own. But of course, if they get stuck, they can ask for help and I can go over and assist them. So this is a really fun one and I will have that link in the description as well. For number seven, we have a classic party game. Even if you don't have a Halloween party, it would still be fun to play. Halloween Bingo. This is a great freebie from Mrs. Hodges Kids on TPT that I will also have linked in the description for you. I love that she has all kinds of different templates that the kids can use. I just had them printed off and I even reused them as long as they didn't get dirty over the years. 
You could play with candy, like you could use M&Ms or Skittles and then have the students keep their little cup of their items that they use to play and you get to eat that. Or you could just play with another item like little counters and then give the kids that win some candy as a prize. I know schools are different based on whether or not you can even use food as rewards. So you would also do like a little goodie bag of Halloween rings or mini erasers that are Halloween themed. Really whatever works best. And I love that the cards she provides for calling out the answers are so big. I think she also has smaller ones as well, but I found when I played this with my students that that was helpful to have the cards extra big. And I think they're even available in color as well. I just used black and white since my school didn't have a colored printer. So that when I would pull one out of the bucket or I'd mix them up and pull one, it was really easy for the students to see what it was and to place their marker on their bingo board. I think there are maybe eight to ten templates, so you'll probably have some students that have the same board, but it shouldn't be too many, so that helps so that there are multiple winners, but not so many that it feels like more people win than lose. And now we are on our last idea, idea number eight. Idea number eight is using an amazing resource that is right here on YouTube called Art for Kids Hub. This website is a go-to for me all year long. I even use it as a reward sometimes because they have amazing directed drawings where it's a dad and usually one of his kids or just one of his family members that are in the video. And the dad is an artist, so he's drawing teaching you how to draw something. And then right after he makes a move on his paper, whoever is doing the drawing with him makes a move on their paper. So they're doing it along with you. It's not just the expert, it's like the expert and someone else who's more of a novice like you and your students. And these turn out so amazing. Most of them can be done in around 10 minutes and then I give the students a little bit of extra time to color in their picture and they turn out so cute. They're great for displaying in the hallway or just as a fun activity or they can make really cute cards or students can just bring them home. I hope you enjoyed hearing about these different Halloween activities that you can do with your students. As I mentioned, all the links to the things I talked about should be in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.